Next up, we have our haplorines. We've already talked about our strepsorines on one half of the tree, so now let's look at our haplorines on the other half. These are our tarsiers, monkeys, apes, and humans. There's a lot of different primates within our haplorine side of the tree. The first trait they have is they don't have this rhinarium. So instead, we have a philtrum or a slight space between our nose and our mouth. And you can see here in this diagram that our noses are different from that of the lemur, where they have that interconnected nose and mouth, which we call a rhinarium. We also don't have a tapetum lucidum. There is no eye shine in any of these haplorine primates. Instead, we see a different type of emphasis on vision. We have a uh, macula and a fovea. So we have a period uh, in the back of our uh, retina where there's an extra uh, intensity of cones. And there is a little bit of a pit, that fovea, which allows us to focus our eyes. So instead of being able to see in low light conditions, what we see in haplorines is very high acuity vision or very good vision under light conditions. This is also reflected in a change in activity patterns. In this diagram, you can see nocturnal versus diurnal species. Nocturnal species are coded as black and our diurnal species are white. And you can see almost all of our strepsorines are nocturnal, um, and but most of our haplorines are diurnal. So we see the shift in activity patterns reflected by this uh, difference in eye anatomy. There's also a difference in what's going on with our postorbital bar. You can see our raccoon here. There is the no postorbital bar. The orbit is actually open right there. Our lemur, they do have that postorbital bar, but you can still kind of stick your finger all the way through the eye socket. It is open in the back. Our gibbon here, though, our haplorine, there is full postorbital closure. The eyeball is completely encased in a bony socket, protecting it from the chewing muscles, which can potentially distort the eye. Um, but let's compare some of the differences we see in our traits. Strepsorines, they have the, a slightly longer snout, still shorter than other mammals, but relatively longer than our haplorines who have a shorter snout. Strepsorines have that rhinarium, haplorines do not. Um, strepsorines have that tooth comb, which we do not see in haplorines. Strepsorines only have a postorbital bar, but haplorines have full postorbital closure. Strepsorines have a tapetum lucidum, but we do not see that in haplorines. Strepsorines only have dichromatic vision. Some haplorines are also dichromats, but we do also see the um, trichromatic vision in many of our haplorines. Strepsorines do not have a macula lutea with that fovea, but we see both of these traits in haplorines associated with higher acuity vision. Strepsorines have a grooming claw, which we do not see in haplorines except for our tarsiers. Strepsorines are mostly nocturnal, while by contrast, haplorines are mostly diurnal. Strepsorines are mostly solitary, but in haplorines, we start to see very complex social behavior. Strepsorines are a little bit smaller, and in our haplorines, we start to see much larger species. Overall, we see that strepsorines have an emphasis on olfaction, but our haplorines have an emphasis on vision. So we see a little bit of a shift in how they're using their sensory ecology. So what are the differences between strepsorines and haplorines?